at Cooper Vision, you know, we're very committed to trying to help eye care practitioners to build patient loyalty and grow their businesses. Innovation is a great way to give you a competitive advantage, but sadly, it is often left to the patient to ask their practitioner, um, or for example, if they were suitable for contact lenses. What we're looking at is trying to um, explore the experiences you've all had in practice. One of the key themes um, is thinking about this idea that feeling and seeing better demands innovation. If you're talking about an individual customer and helping them, it's about empathising what they need, understanding how is that patient um, you know, enjoying life with the lens that they're wearing. We perceive them to be satisfied uh, with what they've got, why unsettle them with introducing a change if you then recommend some new technology? What if it doesn't deliver to those expectations? Next time round, if you then offer new innovation, has their trust and faith in your judgement been delivered? Not all products are going to be for all, all patients, and I think it's important to understand that, but that, that you need to understand that there are a lot of people who will be interested and you won't necessarily be able to tell them who would and who wouldn't. So if you don't offer it, then you're certainly going to be missing out. I think knowledge to the ECP about what the latest lenses can do um, and the benefits they can offer is really, really important. It goes back to the language you use as well. If you say, are you getting an okay with your lenses? And they'll quite often say yes. But if you actually drill down and say, are there any times of the day when you have problems with your lenses or problems with your vision? I think generally there is an attitude within practitioners that they're looking for a reason to, to update patients rather than being proactive in terms of making suggestions as to innovations available. Unless a patient reports uh, an issue with regard to their problem, then the, the, the practitioner perhaps doesn't see there, is, there is any reason to change. Mm -hmm. So they maintain the status quo. It's changing that attitude amongst practitioners to to be proactive in, in yeah. terms of making recommendations. Certainly I think for the reputation of a practice then, we need to be informing our patients at the earliest opportunity of that new innovation so they've then got the informed decision. Yes. Otherwise, if they then uh, find out about a new product online from a friend uh, that maybe attends a different practice, then I think probably that would then affect their loyalty. They may then choose to go somewhere else. I think in terms of the late majority in Lagos, they're, they're the ones that are more likely to be influenced by our attitude towards certain products. I think there's all the laggards are waiting for that endorsement, yeah. the testimonials. I think it's also around eye care practitioners getting that information out there of an honest testimonial um, that a customer has found this new product better and getting that real life experience and a, a sort of testimonial of, of a satisfied, delighted person that that product's worked for them. I think that, that would help. And those are the ones where it takes a little bit more work, I guess, and uh, we have to perhaps tailor our communications in a way that will, and it's not necessarily the, the initial contact, but maybe, you know, telling them about the products and having the staff attitude to to have the confidence to say, well, this is a good product, this, this, this can work for you. For a, a lot of optometrists that are scientists at heart, I think they'll be delivering probably too much on the statistics, the numbers, rather than, well, what does it actually mean to that customer? That, potentially they may be able to wear the lens an extra day a week, a few hours a day. But I think it's also creating theatre as well. If there's signs of drawing in there for you're recommending a new material, if you've invested in anterior eye imaging so that you can demonstrate, yes, there is some drawing, or you're then recommending an eye health product to supplement with it, and then at a follow-up proving that whichever recommendation has resolved that issue, then I think that helps to build the trust. The, the managing of expectations and the, and the time that's, that's required of communicating the, the, the features of products, is it, it, it all takes time and then obviously you have to bring them in to, to see how, how they're getting on with certain products and things like that. So the time, there are time constraints within that. I think it's how you communicate that so it's not seen by someone as a deliberate marketing yeah. piece, that it is a added value of information. Mm. We've started using a, a little bit of social media in that respect, and, it, and you can really target yeah. the, the communications that you, 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 you offer. So in terms of Facebook, you can really drill down the, the, the categories of people and their interests, uh, and, and there are good ways of being able to measure the success of, of, of those campaigns, so, and it's a very cost-effective way of, way of communicating to people as well.